FC Edmonton Soccer, starting now on City. Brought to you by City. The Fath Group. High Signs. And Earthwater. FC Edmonton home to Minnesota United. Welcome to our game today, presented by Waterloo Ford Lincoln, a game that's become known as the Flyover Cup in the last few years. These two rivals fighting for that cup this afternoon. The first two games they played this season have finished in a 1-1 and a 2-2 draw. So this is uh, the rubber match at Clark Stadium this afternoon. Here's the coin toss brought to you by A&W. And the two captains will get together. Conditions, the rain just holding off a little bit at the moment, but still uh, cool and wet weather. And in the stands, the fans are choosing to use the umbrellas to try to stay dry. Uh, not the best conditions from the spectators' point of view today. Let's take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Waterloo Ford Lincoln, beginning with FC Edmonton and Matt Van Oko lining up against his former team. A back four of ZB on the right, Smith on the left, Watson and Roberts in the middle. The midfield, Noni and Correa, the wide men. Eddie Edward will slot into the midfield holding role. And then Christian Rodales rounding it out with four dice just behind Tommy Amiobi this afternoon on his own up front for FC Edmonton. And for Minnesota, and Jack back in goal, Davis, Venegas, Thiago Calvano, and Pitch Colon. Midfield, Greg Jordan, Khalif Alahassan, Ibsen, Giuliano, Vicentini, and that front two, Christian Ramirez, who's uh, got eight goals already, already this season, and Iago Silva. Minnesota have peeled off uh, three, win, three wins on the trot, and uh, they're one of the form teams in the league. Now, the weather report brought to you by AMA Rewards, where you can check out special ticket offers for AMA members at fcedmonton.com. Seven degrees if you're watching in the US, that's about 45 Fahrenheit. Quite a breeze as well, uh, clipping along at about 27K, and the field is definitely wet. Been raining all day today in Alberta's capital. 
FC Edmonton playing all in white today and just gathering for the pre-match huddle. A couple of players getting a chance, Noni most notably coming in as Lance Lang and Saini Niasi both have international call-ups and are unavailable for the Eddies this weekend. A bit of a blow not to have those two players, but it gives a chance for some of the others to come in and make a statement today. Yeah, and actually earlier in the year when the Eddies, or earlier in the fall season when the Eddies had call-ups and Lance Lang was with the Gold Cup, that's where they actually went on a really nice run when they were on the road for a significant portion of July and uh, had had some great performances from some of those role players. And the keepers today, the men that uh, are under pressure, any kind of skidding shots bouncing in front of them can be treacherous. Matt Van Okel, former Minnesota player, he's in between the sticks for FC Edmonton, and that is Sammy and Jacques, the Cameroon player in goal for Minnesota today, coached by Manny Lagos, the coach of the year last year. And Minnesota will kick us off in there. Defending the goal to our right. And Vicencini gets an early touch, and here's Aaron Pitch Colon wearing the captain's armband in the center of defense for Minnesota this afternoon. Home fans trying to get behind their team in the early stages as Roberts gets his first touch, a header away from the danger zone, and Rodal is helping that one out. Amiobi will chase it. Going to be an early test for Johan Smith on the left-hand side, and Fordyce just playing it safely, heading that one into touch. It will be a throw-in for Minnesota. And a key here, the Eddie's winning the toss, so they're going to be going with that wind left to right on your screen through the first half. And that's going to be a big advantage. The breeze has really picked up as the day has gone on. And he did say about 27, 30 kilometers an hour. Gusts can get up to 40, so that wind will play a factor. Throwing on the right-hand side for Minnesota. Early touch for Ibsen. Ibsen trying to thread it out to the right-hand side. The ball gets there eventually, across to the far post. And that's uh, gone over the top of Van Okel's goal. So an early touch of the ball for the Eddie's goalkeeper. Colin Miller said this is going to be nightmare conditions for the defenders. Uh, having to deal with skipping balls. The ball's going to move very quickly on this turf. and. The rain and light, it gets light, and then it gets heavy again, gets light, but the wind is a constant, and it's its still coming down, and uh, we've had a couple of pockets where it's really come down. FC Edmonton with a throw-in on the right-hand side. Uh, ZB with a chance to take this one. Alan ZB had a great season where he's uh, getting a foothold in the team for FC Edmonton after coming through the ranks. One of a clutch of local players and there's another one Milan Roberts in possession now just pokes the ball forward it's not his best pass but he gets a second bite of the cherry and he'll find Albert Watson Watson the Edmonton captain has ZB outside of him patient build up play Conditions definitely not great for the fans, but Colin Miller liking them for the players, feeling that uh, there'll be some added pace and speed. And uh, as Steve mentions, very difficult for defenders in these conditions. That through ball is going to be uh, well taken by and Jacques comes out and makes the claim. And then uh, a late challenge from Johan Smith, who's now apologizing and a free kick given to Minnesota. Yeah, and the thing that keepers are going to have to watch for is Maybe a lot of balls that you think you might try to catch. This time, it, it, in this kind of conditions, you punch. And you think you, discretion is the better part of valor in this case. Uh, balls I saw in the warm-up with both keepers, some balls squirting through the fingers. They were trying to catch it, seeing, testing the ball to see how slick it's going to be. And it's moving around a bit with the wind and with the, with the wet conditions. It's, it's treacherous. So, you know, you're going to be a lot more willing to unleash a 20-yard shot here and see if you can skip one into the keeper. Colin Miller suggesting he'd like to see his players uh, taking long-range shots and uh, getting players to follow them up, looking for potential rebounds. He played three minutes, and Minnesota have themselves a free kick on that right wing. These kinds of free kicks are difficult to defend against as well in these conditions. We've seen uh, Aaron Pitch Colin here score goals in the past, and he's hovering right around the penalty spot 
in the area there as the players look to gain position in the 18-yard box. In comes the cross, and Van Ockel's gone for it, and he didn't quite get there. Pitch Colin nods it down. Ibsen tries to get the ball back into the danger zone. And in the end, Korea just uh, scrambling it away from the danger zone, but some uh, cause for concern there as that ball came into the box. Yeah, the keeper comes, got to get a touch to it, and Matt Van Ockel, it, it uh, flew over his head. I think he misjudged the play of the ball. I don't think he was screened out on that one. I think he came out and he had an idea, but just uh, the ball just kept carrying and carrying over his head, and FC Edmonton quite fortunate that uh, Minnesota didn't uh, turn that into a chance on goal. It's a good uh, cross-field pass by Vicencini. For Minnesota. Venegas playing the ball back into the defense. Colin Miller talking about uh, potentially Minnesota having the best two fullbacks in the league, and he's very impressed by Venegas and Davis and considers them to be a major threat. And one of the jobs for Noni and Korea is going to be trying to neutralize both uh, attacking fullbacks that Minnesota have this afternoon. Yeah, Davis has had a few trials in uh, Major League Soccer a couple of years ago. Had a trial with Toronto FC. As we look here at the foul. Ibsen. Fordyce with the, with the leg in. And uh, just as we talked about, the rain is coming down not quite hard again. A couple of big events happening uh, this weekend in Edmonton, getting a bit of a washout. The World Triathlon Series. Uh, Sonic Booms happening as well. This uh, match up here and it's been uh, a nice summer in Edmonton but the timing of this weekend not great for a couple of the big events around town I'm heading to Sonic Boom after this broadcast so gonna go see some bands you better take your umbrella oh yeah Ibsen playing the ball forward up the right hand side that's nicely done Jordan trying to work the opening for Venegas who's looking to get around the back and he does well there and uh, maybe was tripped with a late tackle by Roberts, but the referee and linesman, who were both on the spot, uh, not seeing anything there. And I think it'll be Johan Smith who'll just kick this ball into touch and allow Venegas to get some treatment here from the bench. Manny Lagos having a word with the fourth official down there, feeling that perhaps uh, that could have been a free kick. Maybe look here. The slide. In case any player's going for the ball, I don't think there's that much in it. Probably wasn't going to get on the end of it, but I think definitely Roberts is a little late in the tackle there. Yes, he is. Venegas can uh, feel a little hard done by that, uh, but he seems like he's going to be okay. It's not going to be difficult to miss him in those pink boots. And you see Minnesota United, we talked about how red hot they are. This is a team I think that uh, everyone in the preseason expected to be one of the favorites uh, for the for the league title for the soccer bowl. And they're on that four game undefeated streak and the highest scoring team in the league now. So uh, Christian Ramirez is red hot. Uh, just a lot of players rounding into that form that we expected all year long from this Minnesota club. And generally when you play them, you know they're going to score. They've scored a goal in each of the last 18 games, so they've got a very strong record there. You know, almost every time, too, uh, FC Edmonton plays them, Colin Miller talks about uh, what a good advertisement these games are for the league. He usually feels that uh, these games, the flyover cup games between these two teams, are uh, generally played in really good spirit, but uh, really competitive between the clubs. And you can see by the results, very, very close this year. Pitch Colin in possession again here. The number four for Minnesota sliding this one into the middle of the park. Rodales just a bit of a shoulder there and a flying uh, left arm. And the referee will want to clamp down on that very early as he's penalized for that tackle against Greg Jordan. No question the weather has affected the attendance today. Oh, it's cold. I mean, honestly, it would be better if it was a couple of degrees colder and it was snowing. Because if it was snowing, it'd be more comfortable. Like, the rain just penetrates you in this, when it's just a couple of degrees above freezing. I think you might be the only one wanting snow at this point in the season, Steve, but I do it's, take your It point. snowed just outside of Calgary, what, a couple of days ago? So 
Watson backpedaling, getting that clearance away from the danger zone, and now it's with CB. Does well to turn the ball into Edwards' path. Edward tries to play the one-two back to him, but uh, that's gone into touch. It's a throw-in for Minnesota. Nil-nil, we've played nine minutes at Clark Stadium. Welcome to our broadcast if you're watching in the US on ESPN3. Good battling for the ball in the left-hand side of the park there by Correa. He's still uh, got possession. He's done extremely well there, but his back pass to Rodales was robbed away from him, and it's a counter here for Minnesota. Looked like he might have just fallen down there under the challenge, but a free kick given right on the edge of the penalty area. I think they, call, um, they, think they felt that Eddie, Eddie Edward tugged him as he went uh, to try to spin around. Got an arm there in there. Yeah, just on the short, well spotted by the referee. One of those sneaky ones. Oh, yeah, gets a little bit of the jersey, so... Made a bit of a meal of it, but definitely a free kick. And a chance here for Minnesota to test Matt Van Oakel. In these conditions, you don't have to get it perfectly in the corner. A, a ball might go through the keeper's hands with the, with the ball this wet and, again, with the gusts of wind. You really just get this on the keeper, test him. Ibsen standing over the ball. Placed right on the edge of the D. Al Hassan. Looks like he might be the favorite to strike it. Number 11, it is Al Hassan. He gets it on target, and it's in off the post. And Minnesota have the lead after 10 minutes of play. Free kick on the edge of the box, and Al Hassan picks the corner and rattles it in off the woodwork. 1-0. Yeah, he hits it low and gets it through. We're going to have to look at it again as he gets through the wall or go on the other side. Let's take a look here. And it goes right through. Gap there between uh, Zebi and Roberts. The wall parts. Boy, they're not going to want to look at that one, the Eddies. Again, right through the wall. Uh, a lot of room there between Zebi and Roberts. And, uh, and Al Hassan really gets a gift there, a free kick that, that's pretty well put right at the wall. But the wall parts for him and allows the ball through. Really not nothing Matt Van Ogel can do. No chance. Uh, he, he's expecting the wall to cover that part of the goal. And uh, the wall doesn't do its job. So well placed in the corner as well. Van Okel just never going to get there. Well, well placed in the sense that it goes in the corner, but it's it's hammered right up where the wall should be. Yeah. It's uh, it goes between two players there, and they they look like they're getting out of the way. It's a basic uh, mistake there from the Eddie's defense. The wall just uh, collapsing at a crucial moment, and Khalif Al Hassan has put his team in front. Minnesota scoring for the 19th game on the trot. And FC Edmonton have to come from behind at home. They got to throw in ZB finding his skipper, Albert Watson. Not a bad ball down the right channel by Watson. Noni will get there. He's being uh, well policed by Davis, but he's trying to make the turn and get the cross in. It's a Game effort by no, and he slips down though in these uh, wet conditions. And Davis does an expert defensive job there. Good experience play by him. And Minnesota have another free kick. Ibsen chipping on forward. And that's Yago sidestepping his marker and Noni. Perhaps in frustration, having just slipped down at the other end, is now given a yellow card. Yeah, Eddie's obviously frustrated. They need to collect themselves after giving up that free kick goal. Just a little late, Michael Noni, but the referee feeling that that was uh, worthy of a yellow card. So he's uh, treading a bit of a tightrope. Now is Michael Noni. <laughs> Again, going back to the free kick goal, there's a lesson there in these conditions. You just 
Launch the ball at the goal. Doesn't have to be pretty. It's wind and the rain and the cold. Things might work out for you. But now the Eddies have to recover. It's been a, a poor start to the game for them. Even with the wind at their backs, they have uh, allowed that early goal, and uh, really Minnesota's had the bulk of the chances of possession. So, yeah. uh, see Edmonton have been struggling to score of late. The last two games been shut out, and now they need to get two to come from behind here. Well, a lot of teams now know, and you know, you, you can't keep a lot of secrets in, in, a, in a league like NASL, where all the coaches know each other very, very well. And there's 11 teams, so there's uh, everyone knows the book now defensively on the Yetis, which is the outside speed, the counter-attack. Teams are now laying out that 4-1-4-1 when they're playing the Yetis. A lot of teams are. Yeah. 15 and, uh, minutes on the watch here. Edmonton trailing 1-0. One, one, one. There's the goal scorer, Al Hassan, chasing that ball. They'll have a throw in on the left wing. Mentioned uh, the flyover cup. It's a competition uh, that between the two uh, teams that were started by the supporters groups, Dark Clouds, Edmonton supporters group, uh, that uh, to, to for the winner of the season series between Minnesota and Edmonton, and the Flyover Cup is a bit of a, a joke at uh, a poke at each city is how it's a place where most people fly over. Edmonton conceding another free kick here in Rodales. Looks like he's going to be going into the book to join Noni as well. A couple of the players there, including the captain, Albert Watson, trying to plead his case, but uh, it's not going to make a difference. There's Manny Lagos uh, in a winter jacket. Not a bad uh, choice today down by the dugout. Odalis got himself into some trouble there, and then I think the referee just feeling like that uh, scissor challenge with the studs up was warranted to be a yellow card. Yeah, studs were up there as he came in, and uh, I think the feeling was a dangerous tackle. And Minnesota's going to reload, get another chance in this position, and uh, Eddie's already having a couple of guys walking the tightrope here. Noni and Rodal is both with yellow cards, and uh, Al Hassan has got the range from uh, this kind of distance, having just scored from a free kick. Maybe he'll uh, be the one who'll try again here, a little bit further out, and this time. They'll want the wall to be the wall instead of just uh, crumbling. Yeah, this is it's, But I'm sure, again, uh, Minnesota knows, again, just try to get this on goal. Uh, things can, can, can happen, and they're good for you in these kind of conditions. Certainly did work out for Minnesota the last time. Kevin Venegas uh, standing over the ball as well as Al Hassan this time. It is Al Hassan, goes for the opposite corner this time and had Van Okel scrambling across his goal line, but it's just the wrong side of the post this time. Uh, Al Hassan tried to vary what he was doing, decide not to try to fire it at the wall again. Van Okel slides it out. His penalty area picks out the captain, Watson. Now Roberts. You can see the ball moving much quicker off the surface with those passes along the deck. Some ironic cheers in the crowd as FC Edmonton win a free kick. Get on the end of it here. Albert Watson coming up from the defensive spot. So is Milan Roberts to get on the end of this. Here comes the free kick. Up goes Watson, headed away well there by Tiago. Drops for four dice. Korea's looking for some support, gets it from ZB. ZB on his heels a little bit. 
Now tries to bring it forward and switching play to the left-hand side. Minnesota doing a good job uh, blocking any passing lanes. But FC Edmonton might try. Watson again just across halfway. Clips one up to the chest of Amiobi. Goes down under the challenge. Referee waves play on it with Noni on the right wing. And now Korea. Korea chips one over the top. That might work out well for Amiobi, but very good goalkeeping by Anjak. Came out to anticipate that well and it smothered the ball easily. See how quickly the ball picks up speed when it skips there. It's not going to check up at all with this uh, cool and wet conditions. It just takes off. And actually, I think that struck Amiobi a little bit on the arm. I think that's why the arms went up from the uh, Minnesota players. Amiobi still a little isolated. So far this afternoon, we've played 20 minutes. He hasn't really had many touches of the ball. Noni there going down under a challenge from Davis. Davis's forward ball is uh, well stepped into there by Ramirez, who's going to have a go down the right-hand side. But ZB showing uh, some good aggression there, getting back to make the tackle. It's a throw in Minnesota. Davis with the throw, got the winner in the 1-0 uh, midweek win. Late goal to continue Minnesota's three-game winning streak. There's Ramirez. Clever little touch in towards Al Hassan there. Ibsen. Played that through the legs of four dice. One back by Edmonton. Rodala stretching for the ball and winning it back. In the end, losing out to Thiago, and that ball will go behind for a goal kick to the Eddies. Minnesota, we see just packing that midfield. Ramirez up there pretty well by himself. Five men making sure the Eddies just don't really get any sort of purchase in midfield. They want to outnumber the Eddies, and that's what Minnesota's done. Been able to keep possession a lot in this in this uh, first half. Korea winning the ball back for the Eddies there, and now it's Rodales. The Eddies just need to get the ball outside onto the wings. Watson playing one four to four guys, perhaps a little bit too much zip on that. Couldn't control it. Davis from Minnesota, four to Ramirez on the chest, and Al Hassan the runner. Not a bad ball with the outside of the right boot, right into the path of Ramirez there from Ibsen. Ramirez into the penalty area. He's tackled well by Rodales, who has no choice but to concede the corner kick. That ball held up like crazy in the wind, and it actually fooled the uh, Christian uh, Rodales there and held up, and Ramirez was able to run onto it. Very nice pass from Ibsen. Good technique, the outside of the boot, and it just uh, ran beautifully for Ramirez. It almost looked like, a, like it bounced back for Ramirez with the wind pulling up that ball. Maybe got a bit of backspin on the pass, too. Taking them a while to get this corner going, but uh, Al Hassan and Venegas both down there by the corner flag on the left wing. Puts it in deep, first time. Headed away by Watson, it'll drop for Korea on the chest. There's nobody ahead of him. Tried to squeak it out to the left and Fordyce, it didn't quite work out. Minnesota have the ball back. Midway through the first half, and Edmonton haven't really got going yet. Trailing by one goal to nil against Minnesota. Al Hassan's free kick. The difference between the teams, the 11th minute goal. Jordan and Yago not quite on the same, same wavelength that time, and away by Edmonton again. Ball's beautifully taken down by Rodales, and now Fordyce. Fordyce sidesteps his man and then wins a free kick. See 
of the Eddies, just trying to get the ball, just trying to get some momentum, some flow to this game. Noni, a nice one too there. Oh, and then goes in late for the ball there. He could be in trouble here. Michael Noni has already got a yellow card. The referee's reached for another one. And I think Noni could be in a lot of trouble. It's when on he the stands ground, up. He's already saying no, 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 no. It's a second yellow for Michael Noni, which means it's a red card. He's sent off in the 24th minute. And that is a costly, costly sliding tackle. Coach Colin Miller not even looking his way as he walks off the pitch. FC Edmonton down to 10 men in the 24th minute. It's, it starts off with a poor, poor touch, and then you chase the ball down on the wet turf and you launch into the tackle that's late. Uh, really, I don't think the referee had much choice. It's a, it's a yellow card offense, and I thought the first one was too. And, and uh, you have to know where you are on the pitch. You're in the offensive third, and you know that ball might be a bit of a lost cause. Go and try to win the ball, but don't leave your feet in that situation. You're not, the goal's not gonna get scored there. Uh, you, you gotta be smart about where you are on the pitch sometimes, and understand that that's just not the kind of place in the, where you are to make that kind of rash challenge. Okay, only bad things can come out of it. Davis here sliding one across the face of goal. Could be still a chance for Jordan, but Rodales kicking that one out of the penalty area. And then Correa somewhat fortunately running away with the ball down the left-hand side. He's got Amiobi in the middle. He's trying to find him here, but that's going to be easily dealt with by v Vicentini. And that is a crushing blow for FC Edmonton. Yeah, down some, to 10 men, some, already 1-0 down. Some really, really poor self-inflicted uh, wounds from the Eddies. Uh, first, the goal where the wall parts and allows a, a f what should have been a well-handled or dealt with free kick to go into the corner of the goal because the wall parts and allows the ball through. And now, some poor tackles, some late tackles here on the wet surface. And uh, the Eddie's now down a man. And honestly, I, I, I don't think that... Uh, I don't think uh, when you, they look at those, uh, those that, that uh, last uh, tackle or attempted tackle again, that they're going to have that much cause. To well, we can see up here Colin Miller at no point complained to the referee or the linesman. He and Noni just walked off the pitch. No, yeah, Noni was shaking like, oh no, no. But I don't think that was like, oh no, ref. You're, uh, you've made a mistake. I think that's, oh no, what, what have I done? Well. FC Edmonton have to hope that they can make it difficult to play against. Sometimes it's tough to play against 10 men. And, and be willing to take those long shots in these conditions and see if you can get one in the keeper, a ball to skip, or something to happen to get you back in this game. That's going to be easy for Anjak. Approaching the half hour mark, he hasn't had much to do so far, just gathering loose balls there in goal, but hasn't really been troubled, and his team 1-0 up and now with a man advantage. But that, that I'll start with, with Michael Noni with that first really poor touch, the heavy touch that where he lost the ball and trying to chase it and get it back, he left his feet. in possession. Now Edward playing in that midfield holding role. He's going to have his work cut out now. Trying to play in Amio, but he doesn't quite work there. Venegas in possession. Not a good feeling for Michael Noni walking off the pitch. 
not even finished the first half and uh, his action is done. Getting a chance to play today. Got some potential, Noni, and we uh, just didn't see it in that first 25 No, and, then he, and again, that's a big opportunity for him, right? Uh, with uh, Miassi and Lang and DeFreitas and Jones out today. Chance for him to go in and shine. Korea breaking through and getting a good shot on goal, and then Jacques just getting his uh, fingertips on the ball and somehow scooping it over the crossbar. Korea coming close for yeah, FC And Jacques was, was, was expecting that ball to go onto the long side of goal, not to the short side. And when it comes near post, I think he's, you see he's got caught wrong-footed there and actually hits the outside of the post. Yeah. But Njok got caught wrong-footed there. He's already cheating, leaning, going the other way. Ball took a big deflection as well, as we could see on that replay. The free kick, though, the corner kick coming to nothing. Another free kick given to Minnesota. I'm not sure if that's a foul or did that ball go out before it came back in, but... Uh... Played half an hour at Clark Stadium, 1-0 to Minnesota, and the Eddies playing 10 men. No new sent off. And Jacques' goal kick doesn't quite get it past halfway, and Rodala's trying to win it back. Ibsen takes it, control though, and it's Al Hassan again. Edward fighting hard for possession for Edmonton and winning the throw in on the right hand side. hard to get out of their own half there a bunch of passes uh, but uh, no forward movement and in the end Van Ockel has to scramble it into touch throw in Minnesota well Minnesota doing a good job pressing the ball they know they know the situation they know they're up a goal and they also know they're up a man and they can gamble a bit and they can uh, bring people forward and put pressure and see if they can find that odd man that they have the advantage on isolate create something Ibsen trying to thread that one inside the fullback. Van Ockel has the measure of it and will claim that one easily. Throws it out for Zibi. Bordice returning the pass to Zibi. Nice flicked header on towards Amiobi. Fordyce getting the ball back and now Zibi again. You can tell they're a man short getting crowded each time they have the ball, but here Amiobi can maybe use his pace a little bit. Fordyce tried to send the ball back to him, but Minnesota with too many players back for that. It's the right idea, they just, but you're right. Minnesota, just a, those, those charcoal gray shirts are all back. Again, number advantage working to, working to their benefit. Smart looking shirts they are as well. Oh, Hassan's pass cut out there by Edward, did a good job, and Fordyce playing it back to Van Ockel. He's going to have to watch that one closely, he does. Onto the right boot, and Amiobi wins his header, but uh, unfortunately nobody up with him. And that ball is going to drift right down by the corner flag. The goalkeeper makes a bad mistake, though. I don't know why he needed to touch that. It was, if he just let that run, it was a goal kick, but he's conceded a throw in right down by the corner flag. And Jacques... So Manny Lagos just throw up his hands in the air as he saw that happen. I don't know why he's even thinking about going out and getting that ball. Unless he thought that maybe that one of Minnesota's players had a touch. Fordyce jinking into the box, looks for the one-two with Korea. Korea just didn't quite read it and already run the other direction. Ibsen dinging it out to the right-hand side, picking out Venegas. Venegas has a go down the right-hand side, but Korea just 
kicks the ball away from him, and it's gone all the way back to Van Ockel, who again finds touch from his clearance. Throw in. Amiobi with a bit of space and Fordyce ahead of him has a chance here. He's on the edge of the penalty area. Daryl Fordyce strikes it first time. And uh, just doesn't get his foot wrapped around the ball. It fizzes wide of the post. Yeah, pitch, pitch goal in there coming back. Fordyce has to get that shot off quickly. Great ball releasing Fordyce from Amiobi after he holds it up. Just might have been over the ball a little bit too much there. The first touch forcing him to lean back a bit was he. As he, as he shot, took that up. But that's what they gotta do. They gotta get those shots in from distance. They gotta, they're not gonna have the time to work the ball around in the area or to, or to try to create those giant chances. They gotta get it to a dangerous spot and let it rip. We know four dice can hit them from that range and maybe just reaching for it a little bit, stretching a touch, but a good break by Amiobi. Some uh, signs there that FC Edmonton uh, can still make something of this, even though they are one down and one man down. No free kick given there. Rodal is uh, considered to be a fair shoulder charge. And Roberts continues the ball, the break forward with the ball, but it's passed back to Njok this time. Nice cross field pass. And Vicentini, Davis just slowing things down back to pitch Colin. Ibsen just helping this one along. Minnesota looking in control when they're in possession. Venegas on the right wing. Just uh, didn't fancy going around Smith that time, and as he tried to make something of it, runs the ball into touch. It's a throw in for the Eddies. as well under pressure from Amiobi. Edward gets his head on that one. Rodales just couldn't keep it going. It's been a lot of heavy touches on this wet turf. Venegas to Davis. Davis pushing it forward for Al Hassan. Davis will continue on the overlap. Good football from Minnesota, but Fordyce did a good job backtracking there for FC Edmonton and Watson clears the danger zone. Dallas forward header for Amiobi. Amiobi clutching his head. Nothing, uh, nothing serious in that. Just looked like it might have been a clash of heads. I think a genuine attempt by Aaron Pitch Colin to get the ball, but Amiobi certainly came off worse there. Well, Dallas looking immediately to the linesman who was right there, saying, uh, "Where's the call?" There, as we see, Pitch Colin got his forearm there at, up into uh, Amiobi's head. So. And when you're frustrated, when you feel the calls are going against you, these kind of things make you see red a little bit. Tommy Amiobi, very mild-mannered player, though, and uh, not often that he's complaining. Just uh, you could see from the replay, just got the forearm there. Pitch Colin used that for a bit of leverage. No free kick given, though, and it's Minnesota back in possession. They lead 1-0, and uh, we're about seven minutes away from half time. Ibsen just losing possession on that occasion. And it's with Korea. Korea tackled from behind, though. They've just struggled to keep the ball when they've even had the chance. FC Edmonton. They've had a little bit of success, I think, when Korea's got the ball there out on the left. I think that's really a few times they look dangerous. Amiobi, I think, done an okay job holding the ball up. But when you're down 10 men, you got no help up there. 
He's holding the ball up, but there's nowhere to hold it for. Oh, Hassan has Ibsen to the left. He's gone to the right. Here's Ramirez will try the strike. He's always going to shoot from that range. And uh, this time, though, it goes the wrong side of the post. As far as he's concerned, then it's a goal kick. Great idea from Ramirez. I think he just uh, didn't get quite an all of the ball. Stubbed it a little bit as he uh, turned and shot. But Minnesota, with a little bit of decent movement there, had a, found a gap between the center backs. Created a window there for, uh, for Ramirez to see the goal. The atmosphere in the crowd, a little bit like the weather, is just a bit damp and a bit of an anti-climax at the moment. Fans uh, feeling like it's a real uphill struggle for FC Edmonton. And it is. With 10 men in these conditions, there'll be probably substitutions as uh, Colin Miller tries to bring on some fresh legs in the second half. That's a nice header by Amiobi, holds it up for Zibi and tries to return the ball and Edwards chasing Edward into the penalty area, but you can see that ball just skipping off the wet turf and makes it hard for Edward to catch and easy for Njok to pick it up. Five minutes to half time. Edmonton 1-0 down and playing with 10 men. Michael Noni sent off in the 24th minute for a second yellow card offense. You can almost hear the shouts of the players. There's just so, so little uh, noise from the crowd today. Free kick given there. To the mirror is from... leaning into Roberts. Yeah. You can hear the howl of the wind, too. That's a chance for Ford, I see it. Plays it back in field for Edward. It wasn't the best pass. Al Hassan with it. Vicentini. Al Hassan again, the goal scorer. Always put in a dangerous looking cross, and that's very nearly. Kicked towards his own goal by Milan Roberts, and in the end, goes over the top. And that's where Colin Miller's reference comes into play. Nightmare for defenses with balls like this to defend. Yeah, it just skips on you, gets on you really fast. It comes up off his shin. That's a terrible feeling if you're a defender who rolls up on your shin like that. You know it's going somewhere towards goal. Could have gone anywhere. Thankfully for Roberts and Edmonton, it's gone over the bar. And it's harmless. It's Al Hassan's corner. It's gone deep. Van Ockel's uh, up for it, and the whistle's gone anyway. He did get his hands on the ball. Goalies will tell you weather like this with the uh, balls these days. It's almost like a bar of soap trying to catch it. Yeah, you got Iago, I think, there for obstruction on Matt Van Ockel. But yeah, the ball nowadays, it's got that slick coating, and when it's uh, like this. So I think shots, when you're down 10 men like the Eddies, just, just launch them. I, I, I just think that's the way to go. Well, they haven't really had many shooting chances, and uh, getting to that end of the pitch has been a big struggle. Minnesota pressing very effectively in this first half. And really only Korea and Fordyce have had looks at goal. Both, both were off the target. Colin Miller felt that his team had trained well all week. Had been in the right frame of mind for this match. Well, it's been a tough first half for his players. The rain's really picked up again. Again, it's coming down really hard. Tell the supporters that are here, they they. Uh, Deserve some credit. There, that, that's it's. As I said, it's not nice to be out there today. Milan Roberts heading one away. But the ball very quickly won back by Minnesota. Colin's pass, not his best, picked up by Fordyce, but 
Very few options for Fordyce, and in the end, he slides it into the path of Amiobi, and it wasn't a bad ball, and it's one a throw in for FC Edmonton. Good recovery there, good recovery there by Tiago Calvano. Fordyce chips one over the top for Zibi to chase, and I don't think he's going to have the speed to get there. Tiago shields him off. Just uh, skipping off that turf again, and it's behind for a goal kick. We've got less than a minute of the first 45 minutes. We'll have two minutes of added stoppages at the end of that. Good clearance by Anjak. Watson's header enough to win the ball back but concede the throw. Davis with the throw in back to pitch colon. And Minnesota not in any great rush to bring the ball forward. We're going to have three minutes of stoppage time. Be interesting to see how the Eddies, if they can reorganize, come out in the second half. And they'll be going against this wind in the second half. The pressure by Rodal is there to force the error from Anjak. It's a throw in for the Eddies. But that's better. At least there's some urgency there shown by Rod Alice. Just try something, get in the keeper's face. And Korea, who's looked good in this first half, again, is game enough to win a free kick right on the edge of the penalty area. They'll throw men forward for this, and this is uh, always a chance with 10 men set pieces to try to sneak a goal, and that's what they'll be looking for here on the stroke of half time. Get this in front of the goalkeeper. Make the goalkeeper work. Because again, these conditions, if you can force that keeper to get, to try to handle the ball, things might work out for you. Daryl Fordyce standing over the ball. Injury time in the first half. This would be a great time for the Eddies to draw level. And some encouragement at half time. Four dice. It's gone harmlessly wide, and it will be a goal kick. And that's not what you need to have happen: is ball to go long and and really let Minnesota off the hook. Because you're right; that's one of those situations where you're down a man. You have to make them them those. You have to make the most out of those set pieces. Right-footed and Jacques goal kick off the ground. It's good distance on it. Watson winning the header. Might have bounced off a Minnesota player. It is an Eddie's throw in. ZB's throw aimed at Amiobi. Edward trying to win it back. ZB does so. Rodales turning it forward. Minnesota just getting in the way and Able to put it into touch again, make them start over again. This time ZB throwing it back to Watson. In the dying seconds of the first half here at Clark Stadium, Minnesota with a 1-0 lead. Al Hassan's goal and Noni sent off, meaning the Eddies are playing with 10 men for the rest of this match. Good interception by Roberts. As Watson at his side, and that is the half-time whistle. And uh, not the best half for FC Edmonton. Trailing by one goal to nil, and down to ten men after that first half. It's one nil to Minnesota. Yeah, again, you know, they're gonna look at, at that uh, free kick attempt by Al Hassan and see two players looking like they're getting out of the way in the wall with ZB and Roberts, uh, the gap appearing between the two of them and, and allowing Minnesota that early chance. And then, you know, on the wet turf, 
you got to control yourself. You know those tackles are gonna are gonna come in and some heavy touches, and and they end up paying for it with a couple of late challenges that turn into a red card. Well, we'll be hearing from both coaches at halftime down on the pitch as they prepare to uh, give messages to their players at halftime. And we're going to first hear from Manny Lagos at pitch side, Steve. Hi, Manny. First, uh, just talk about the conditions out there and uh, is it difficult or, or, or to, to play in or, or are you guys okay? No, I, I think it's difficult to play in. You know, we... Um I, I thought actually started sharp. I, mean, I thought we were dealing with the conditions pretty well. Ironically, since the red card, I think we've kind of um, typical human nature, gotten a little complacent in terms of how we're playing. So ultimately, it's a cold, windy, wet, hard day for soccer. But at the same time, uh, the skill and quality to come out in conditions like these because it's a very slippery uh, field. It seems like it's been hard. There's been a lot of heavy touches uh, to controlling the ball. That is a, is a, the ball seems to be moving quite quick on the turf. No doubt about it. I mean, it's fast. It's very uh, quick. And, again, if you have a bad touch and then guys are going in with tackles hard or, or you're losing the ball in bad spots. So, again, uh, we, we started sharply, but we, we've got to do a little work here to make sure uh, we get the result. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Manny Lagos, the coach of the year last year, not very impressed with the way his team have played since they've had the man advantage and saying that uh, perhaps uh, been a little complacent since they uh, since they got that man advantage when Michael Noni was sent off. Let's hear what the uh, Eddie's coach, Colin Miller, has to say about that. Colin, we've got to deal with the red card at the beginning. H how did you see that one? Uh, I don't want to get myself in trouble, guys, to be honest with you, but, uh, you know, we've had this referee before and the league have asked me to be nice to referees and I find it very, very difficult here. So I, I'd rather not answer the question until I've seen it again, but uh, if the, the free kick decision was in the go by, it just sums his day up so far. Let's deal with then now being down to 10 men. How, what message do you give to your players? What's the strategy at this point? I'm very pleased with the response, actually, to going down to 10 men. Uh, well, since we've gone to down to, to 10 men, Gareth, I think the, the guy's attitude has been excellent. Sure, we'll have to defend at times, but uh, we'll still get one or two chances. I've been disappointed with the quality of our free kicks, in all honesty. Uh, if that's how we're going to get a chance to score here, uh, rather than free play, our free kicks and our delivery has got to be much, 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 uh, much better. Uh, but the guy's attitude has been great. You know, we'll make one or two changes. One, hopefully Pablo Cruz will uh, appear here at some point in the, at, uh, the, maybe the last half an hour, 25 minutes. We're not out of the game yet. The, the guy's attitude has been excellent, and we just have to keep this going. Okay, thank you, Colin. Thank you. Colin Miller then pleased with the way his team responded after that crushing blow of a red card to Michael Noni, his second yellow in the 24th minute, and the Eddies trailing by 1-0 at halftime. Al Hassan's goal, the difference between the teams. And that's where we are at halftime. 1-0 to Minnesota. Welcome back to Clark Stadium, set for the second half. FC Edmonton with 10 men up against Minnesota. And our broadcast brought to you today by Waterloo Ford Lincoln. Eddies attacking the goal to our left against a Fairly strong wind in the second half. Trailing by one goal to nil. Colin Miller hinting at changes, substitutions, none so far. And both managers seeming to agree that since the red card, in fact, Edmonton had played uh, a little bit better and Minnesota perhaps uh, stepped off the gas more than their coach would have expected, Manny Lagos. Korea trying to win possession back there, but muscled out of it. With Davis again on that left hand side. Watson looked like he wasn't quite sure where the ball was for a moment there, but he's found uh, Milan Roberts. Roberts just into the path of Van Ockel's right boot. Perhaps the keeper not quite expecting it. Doesn't get the sort of distance he normally does, but not forgetting there is quite a strong wind and is uh, blowing straight in his face. Zibi's uh, done well to gain some ground up the right hand side and plays it back to Fordyce. Fordyce, an early ball into the box. That's going to be easy for Thiago to head away, but it drops again to Roberts, and it's not a bad start to the second half by FC Edmonton. Korea in possession. Chips this one nicely into the path of Amiobi, but again, well defended by Minnesota. Korea gets a second chance, though. This time he's going to attempt to play it into Amiobi, but uh, that didn't quite work out. Minnesota can clear easily, and there's a good counter-attack on here. And Ramirez is going to play it forward, but uh, doesn't quite get pick up the run from Yago that time, and it's back with Roberts again. 
You're, but the, the Eddies move the balls a little bit quicker. Uh, some interplay there between uh, Fordyce and uh, Dustin Correa. And, and, and it created at least somewhat of an opening. And that's what they've got to do uh, as well. Just when they get those chances and they want to put the ball on the ground, that ball's got to move really quick. They're outnumbered. And yes, I know there's lots of excuses the Eddies can make, but that's why you have to have a squad. Yes, they're missing five regulars today. They've, they've got players who've got to go out there and want to be counted. Free kick for Edmonton here. Rodalis just gets things moving again. Here's Roberts. Checks and looks ahead of him for some support. He's probably going to go all the way back to Van Ockel here. Not much on for him. He'll have the ball back on the left-hand side now, Roberts. He's going to switch play to his fellow central defender, Watson, but Watson's uh, squeezed right back towards his own corner flag and can just blast this one forward. Fordyce leaning into his man, does well with that one, and Amiobi on the right-hand side has uh, done well to get past his marker. They've got two in the middle. Amiobi's cut back, doesn't beat the first defender, but ZB has possession. Now Rodalis, good battling back by Ibsen. Very fine play from the Minnesota midfielder. He's had a good game today and snuffs out the danger there when he was desperately needed. That was Edmonton with a real chance there, but Amiobi just couldn't pick the pass after he'd beaten his man. Here's Smith. Smith's on his horse. He's got terrific pace. Smith down the left-hand side. He's tackled very well by Greg Jordan. Just showed too much of it to Jordan, whose timing in the challenge there was impeccable. Another heavy touch. We talked about it early in the first half. But the heavy touch there allowed Jordan to uh, to lay out and get to the ball and not really worry too much about fouling Johan Smith. Well, Ami Obi's just off the pitch at the moment. Uh, picked up some kind of a knock there as he made that break down the right wing and broke into the penalty area, but so at the moment, the Eddies are down to nine men with Amiobi off the pitch, and Minnesota trying to cash in here, but CB doing a good job there to win the ball back for the Eddies. Just wondering why the Eddies don't kick it into touch right now and at least uh, slow it down. Middle of the field for Edward again, that's another strong touch, and the ball is going to be played through into the penalty area. Danger in here, and Watson just uh, scrambling it over the top and into touch. It's going to be a corner kick. Amiobi limping back onto the pitch from the halfway line. Here's what happened. Just uh, seemed to fall awkwardly on his uh, foot and maybe twisted the ankle just a touch there, but he seems to be okay at the moment, just stretching in that six yard area and bouncing as he uh, tries to warm it up and waits for the corner to come in. Al Hassan tries the short corner, but in combination with Venegas, that ball goes out for another corner kick to Minnesota. Another corner from the right hand side into the box, and Amiobi gets it away again. The corner kick from the right hand side. Venegas and Al Hassan. Playing the corner short again, and Al Hassan switching it to the edge of the penalty area. Vishnuchini into the penalty box, away by Roberts. Fordyce helping it on with the back header, but it's uh, Minnesota's ball again. Justin Davis. Pitch Colin now. Technical crew doing their best in these uh, conditions to try to keep the lenses clean on our cameras, but uh, 
the rain coming down sideways, so we must apologize. We're doing our best to try to keep it as uh, clean as possible, but conditions playing havoc with uh, our technical crew. It's a great team that uh, are doing their best here, so uh, just know that uh, doing all they can to bring you the best possible broadcast that we can here in Edmonton today, but not easy in this kind of weather. Very wet and cold and windy. I think Minnesota doing a better job here with the with the added man, or not the added man, but being upper man. And being patient, just letting, holding on to the ball and waiting for the chances to happen and not forcing what's not there. And they're having some long swaths of possession right now. Long stretches where they've got the ball and they're just making the right passes, find the easy play. When you're up a goal, that's the right way to do it. Don't 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 give the other team the counter-attacking opportunity. Good control by Van Okel, plays it out to Roberts. Roberts has got Rodales' head of him. Nice pass, Rodales. It was almost a lovely overlapping pass towards uh, Smith, but again, the uh, ball just skidding off the surface and gets away from him, goes out for a throw in. Pitch Colon in possession here. Minnesota got all the time in the world. Man advantage. Going to play one inside the fullback. Venegas has got inside, and there's his ball across into the middle. They're appealing for handball as Roberts slides in and makes the interception. Smith can't get that one clear. The ball back with Venegas again. Jordan and Correa in a chase. Jordan's been able to find Venegas, who's still going here. Gets the cross in as well, but it's picked up by Matt Van Okel. Venegas with uh, beat, beating both Korea and Rodales there, both trying to get their shoulders into him and try to knock him off the ball. Not able to do it. There were some cries from Minnesota there when the Milan Roberts uh, blocked that earlier cross from Venegas, feeling that uh, as he slid, that might have come off his arm. Big clearance by Van Okel goes all the way through to his opposite number, and Jacques. Minnesota have the ball again. Roberts winning it back, Rodales now, side steps two, couldn't get away from the third one. Johan Smith with the ball, infield to Edward, Edward just repositions himself, looks for some support, he's got it from the right hand side, and Zibi. Zibi just punching that ball forward for Amiobi along the deck, but uh, very well played by Aaron Pitch Colon to win it back for Minnesota. Ramirez has played a nice ball over the top there for Davis. Davis all by himself on that left wing. Nobody up with him. Has to slide it back for Al Hassan. Ramirez getting another touch, but this time he's given it away. But so have FC Edmonton. Just at the moment, Amiobi was in a bit of space. Couldn't find him. Minnesota with that extra man. It looks like they have an extra man. They're getting long periods of possession where FC Edmonton simply just can't chase every ball, being a man down, trying to keep their shape. Again, you see they're being patient, just taking what's there, taking what's available with that extra attacker, finding that, finding that, that open man, and not forcing anything. Just allowing to, themselves to hang onto the ball. They're up a goal. There's no pressure on them to force anything that's not there. Up a goal and with a man advantage. And it's a real mountain to climb for the Eddies in this second half. But the first 10 minutes of the second half has been a pretty good start for them. Trying to build again here with Roberts from the back. He's playing it over the top. Yago can take that one on the chest and takes the ball away from Smith. 
Now Venegas again. Had a lot of touches of the ball from fullback. Seems like he's been all over the pitch. Now Ibsen in the midfield. Playmaker. Al Hassan, the goal scorer from that free kick. Now Ramirez. Ramirez continuing his run, but not able to get on the end of that one. Edward turns and tries to bring the ball away for FC Edmonton. Again, he's just run it a little too far. Chance for Venegas again to attack from the right. Vicentini will strike one, and that's deflected out for another corner for Minnesota. Colin Miller hinted that perhaps uh, Pablo Cruz might be getting a run out for the last 20 or 30 minutes. We're approaching the last half hour in the next few minutes here. I tell you, I'd much rather be out there running around than sitting on the bench in these conditions. Yeah. Substitutes all bundled up in winter gear. Both managers wearing uh, winter jackets today. Oh, Hassan from the right-hand side from another short corner. It's uh, headed towards goal. Wasn't a bad effort by Jordan. Van Okel did get across to make the save. And an infringement had already been spotted by the referee. I'll tell you now it says that the, the temperature is six, 6 Celsius, but it certainly feels colder than that. Yeah, the fans uh, will not be able to feel their feet at the end of this game. It is uh, definitely cool conditions and wet too. There's just not much cover out there in the stands. Venegas. Right-footed chip ball forward. It's uh, placed into the path of Al Hassan, but that's too long to goal kick for FC Edmonton. And even without that was too long. You just saw that ball just accelerate and take off after that first bounce. You know, once that ball hits the turf and you're trying to run after it, it's not going to check up for you at all. Not when you're going with the wind like Minnesota. Van Okel right footed. There's the goal kick up towards halfway. Amiobi the target, beaten in the air by Pitch Colon. And picked up by Jordan, but won back by Roberts and a good first time pass for Zibi. ZB has some support from Fordyce. Rodales is ahead of him on the overlap. Here's Rodales. Chance here for FC Edmonton. He's offside. Well, that's uh, probably one of the best breaks they've put together. Rodales must just have strayed offside. Just. And the flag was up. You see, Edward was down through that whole sequence. And actually, as the Eddies were challenging, Vicentini, who was in the b battle with him, stopped to make sure he was all right. He was really sporting of him, but I'm sure his coach was probably thinking, why don't you get back and help us defend? So, yeah, it was absolutely, it was interesting. Edward was down, but Vicentini stopped to actually say, hey, are you okay? As Rod Allis and everyone was checking, was, was, were coming forward. Definitely not something you see very often at this level of the game. Here is Vicentini. Hopefully he doesn't get into too much trouble with his coach. Played a nice pass forward there. Our Hassan's on the end of this. And support from Yago. Smith trying to win the ball back for him. So is Korea. Korea makes the tackle but concedes the throw. Well, I don't want to be seen as, as criticizing excessive sportsmanship. <laughs> Ibsen playing a square pass for Thiago. Venegas. Pitch Colin again. And, uh, Pablo Cruz is, is uh, out of the winter gear and is looking like he's ready to come into the game. It's going to be hard to miss with that haircut that we're going to see. Had some injury problems since joining FC Edmonton, so the fans haven't had much of a chance to see him. This will tune here. He'll tee up the shot, perhaps, and in fact slides it for Ibsen, who'll try one. And Van Okel 
gets his hands on it, but it slips out of his grasp. Thankfully for him, goes over the top of the crossbar. You can see him rubbing his gloves together after that, trying to dry him off. But again, that's why you just get the ball on goal. These conditions. Talking earlier how slippery that ball is when it's wet for goalkeepers, and that was uh, good well to get everything behind it and make sure that it would go over the top, but that's the kind of thing in dry weather, be a routine catch for Van Ockel. So it is very tough out there for the keepers, especially. Yeah, I think he was trying to catch it. His hands were in that position. Cruz is going to come on now. And he's going to replace Christian Rodales, who runs uh, straight off to the bench, to the dugout. Doesn't wait to shake hands with the player coming on. He's already had a yellow card as well, Rodales. Maybe that plays into Colin Miller's thinking to make the substitution, which is brought to you by the help, Edmonton's premier clothing boutique. Korea here getting a chance, and uh, Cruz may well get his first touch. And he does, there he is. And it's a good first pass, positive start, finds Edward. Now Roberts. Just pushing it to his central defensive partner, Watson, who'll play it back to Van Ockel. Pass forward by Watson, picked up by Vishnachini. Cruz winning it back. Playing it back into the midfield and Edward. Here's Cruz again. Good ball out wide to the right there. Okay, just see Minnesota, there are five players lined up in a defensive line. When the Eddies get the ball, just saying, okay, you're down a man, try to break this down completely shutting them down at the moment and they as they did there again chance from the right hand side cross into the area dealt with by edward who's back and roberts will hammer the ball off the minnesota player vision chaining to have a goal kick so cruz on what do you think the instructions for him will have been from colin miller just try to honestly just try to bring some life into into this attack and try to do something to, to be a bit of a spark plug for the Eddies. And again, I think the message is like it was for a lot of the players at the start of this game. See if you can play your way into this lineup. You know, we know there's five people, five regulars missing. The two who are on international duty, three out to injury. But uh, got to take these chances if you're a player who's on the, on the depth chart to try to move up and say, okay, Pablo, this is your chance. You haven't, you've been hurt a lot of, you've been hurt a lot since you've been signed. And this is your chance for you to show us something. Oh, Hassan, edge of the penalty area, fires out the shot. Not a bad effort, very little back lift there. Got some power behind it, but uh, Van Ockel equal to it. Low down to his left. Very good stop by Matt Van Ockel against his former club. Yeah, and I think this is a, is a good save because Matt Van Ockel's leaning the other way a little bit, thinking it's going to go the long side of goal, and it comes short. Substitution happening momentarily here for Minnesota. In fact, it will take place now. Yago is going to be replaced by Daniel Mendez. That's the number 18 for Minnesota. And that substitution brought to you by the helm, Edmonton's premier men's clothing boutique. Good 65 minutes for Yago. Some good work by him. Danger here as Ramirez drives one, and he'll feel like from there he should have hit the target. As it is, it's uh, fizzed wide at the post. I'll tell you that that corner kick hits two Eddie's players. They don't deal with it as it comes down after uh, on the short corner. Al Hassan puts it in and it goes off one Eddie, goes off a second Eddie, and then it falls to Ramirez. And if that had found the top of the net, that would have been another self-inflicted wound to get two touches on it and then still allow a chance. It's. Uh, a hard one to swallow if that would have found the net. Van Ockel drives one through the middle of the field. That's uh, easy for pitch, Colin. Here's the Minnesota captain again in possession. 
Venegas again on the right. Got his best pass of the match, won back by Johan Smith, who gets a throw in for the home team. Edmonton still trailing by one goal to nil. And we're in the 67th minute of play at Clark Stadium. his forward ball. Korea could get on the end of it here. He's done well. Amiobi makes a run into the box. Korea his pass bypasses him. It's just gone too far. And it's picked up by Al Hassan and Minnesota will breathe again. Colvano really got fooled there. Tiago with uh, that ball that went out for Korea. It held up in the wind and, and uh, Tiago actually overran it. And allowed Korea to get behind but then uh, the cross was just too deep. Smith on the left-hand side, sidesteps his man, does well there. He's got an overlapping run by Korea. Again, Amiobi in the area. He's the only Eddies player in there. Smith shaping up for the cross, but then passes the ball into the midfield. It's with Fordyce. Now Edward. Here's Amiobi, first touch pass. Wide to the right and Watson, nobody in the box at the moment for FC Edmonton. So they shift it to the left-hand side, it's with Roberts. Four dice. Now Smith, Smith tried to push it around Venegas and go around him, but he's got to throw in. Cruz. Cruz making the break down the left-hand side, winning another throw in for the Eddies. Roberts. Pass by Edward out to the right-hand side, just didn't get enough on it. In the last 20 minutes, Edmonton trailing by one goal to nil. Very poor pass out of defense there. Picked up by Korea for the Eddies. And he just didn't make the most of it. Had runs from Fordyce and from Anthony Obi. But he just couldn't pick the pass. Yeah, it's a really poor pass from Thiago. Left it short. But it was wasted by the Eddies. Benegas from the right is going to have a go at Smith here. Checks back, keeps the ball, and plays it back for Vishnachini. Ibsen now. One two with Al Hassan, gets the ball back. Minnesota just keeping the passing, ticking over here. It's a nice play. Jordan. Got a man outside of him. He's going all the way back to pitch Colin. Vicentini. Boakai is getting ready to come in the game. Minnesota putting uh, a lot of passes together here, but not really going anywhere. It is sometimes difficult to play against 10 men. And Edmonton just making sure they're very disciplined, keeping their shape while Minnesota have possession here, not committing too many forward to try to press them because they're a man down. Worked it all the way to the area here, though. That's some good play. There's a real chance here. There's the strike on goal by Jordan, and it's gone over the top. It's going to be a goal kick. Oh, I think Minnesota is saying that's got to be a corner. I think that deflected off Milan Robertson went over. I think that, that shot from, from Jordan hit the defender and went over. 
It definitely did. Another substitution here for the Eddies. Dustin Correa being replaced by Hanson Boakai. Boakai, maybe with that extra added spark of attacking play in the last 20 minutes or so, can perhaps uh, conjure up some magic for FC Edmonton. That substitution brought to you by the helm, Edmonton's premier men's clothing boutique. But the uh, the linesman, the referee, really missed the one there because that was uh, fairly uh, evident that that Milan Roberts. Uh, Blocked that and we went over. Van it should have been a corner for the uh, for Minnesota. Pitch Colin winning another header from Van Oakel's clearance and a free kick given to Minnesota. Vegas again for Minnesota, infield. And he gets it back. Must have touched the ball as much as or more than any other player out there for Vegas today. And Mendez just uh, trying his best, but couldn't keep that ball in play. It's a goal kick for Edmonton. Cruz on the right-hand side, Boakai on the left. Two substitutions Colin Miller's made. <laughs> Roberts back to his own keeper. There's no way forward. Frank Jonke looks like he's going to come in. Oakai's first touch doesn't work out well. Gets uh, robbed of possession, but surrounded by two or three charcoal shirts. So it wasn't exactly an easy task. Outstanding save. Ramirez thought he'd scored there, but Van Oko with a terrific stop, flying to his left and fingertipping that one over the top. There's a super stop. And here's that substitution, Frank Jonke coming on. And he is going to replace Tommy Amiobi. Substitution brought to you by the helm on Jasper Ave and 104th Street. Miami always had to do a lot of thankless running today. Really isolated up there with Edmonton down to 10 men for so long in this game. Another short corner by Minnesota and Van Oakel fisting that one away. They don't have it totally clear. It's with Vicentini. Edward will win it back now for Edmonton. Forward pass taken calmly down by Davis, though, and it's with Venegas yet again. Ball over the top, the flags up. Flags up. Davis was offside. Free kick for Edmonton. Probably the save of the match so far there from Matt Van Okel. Definitely, I think Ramirez thought that that was in. The only thing is that Ramirez did put it toward the middle of the goal, and Matt Van Oakle will still have to show some really great reflexes to get those, those hands up right away, parry that over. Cruz, clever little touch there to pick out ZB. ZB gets around Ibsen. Nice to have a go down the right-hand side, Davis. More than a match for that. 
with Mendez. Just turns it around the corner. Venegas has got all kinds of space to chase into here. Al Hassan at the far post. That's where he's aiming towards. Just gets a bit too much on it. And that goes behind for a goal kick. And that's the thing. You're chasing the ball so much when you're down to 10 men that as the game goes on, fatigue sets in. And uh, as well, he's got to start taking some chances because you're down a goal. Approaching the last 10 minutes now, Colin Miller just trying to rev his team up from the touchline there. But Minnesota have done a really good job in this half of being disciplined. And we talked about how they've been holding on to the ball. And But I think a lot of that is to just... The most important thing they know is they've got the three points in the bag if they've uh, just... Because they already have the advantage is to not give up something stupid. And that's the first first job for Minnesota in this half. And that's what they've taken care of. Fine play by Boakai to control that ball and bring it down. It gets played forward towards Fordyce. But one back again by Minnesota. Ibsen's outside of the foot. Pass cut out by Smith. Boakai gets a touch. It's with Roberts now. And Zibi. Fordyce holding it up very well under pressure from two or three players there. Cruz has it. Finds Edward. Roberts joining the play. Gave Smith a lot to do there, but he does have the throw in. Talking to himself, though. He knows he left that pass short. Smith there as he prepared to take the throw in. And look again, the ball just slipping out of his hands. It's uh, very wet and slippery conditions out there. Smith, once again. Edward. Cruz gets a touch to keep it alive. And Boakai. Boakai is just sold four dice a little short there. And the through ball to Ramirez is too far for him to have a run at goal. He's right down by the corner flag here. Minnesota's top scorer finds Al Hassan, who makes it into the penalty area and tries the right footed shot to the far post. And once again, excellent goalkeeping by, by Van Ockel. That looked like it was probably going wide, but he made sure of it. He also sees that there was another Minnesota player at that far post. So it's not just about it going wide, it's about it getting that into uh, an area where we create a dead ball situation and not allow Minnesota to keep that play alive in the penalty area. Pablo Campos ready to come on for Minnesota. Looks like they're going to take their time with this corner from the left-hand side. Al Hassan getting a few boos with 10 minutes left now at Clark Stadium. A slender 1-0 lead for Minnesota. They've had a mad advantage since the 24th minute. Chance for Vicentini to drive one here, but... Uh, doesn't get that anywhere near on target. It's a goal kick. And now the substitution will take place. And Ramirez, that's uh, his last action, shakes the hand of the referee. And he's going to be replaced by Campos. The substitution brought to you by the helm. You know, yeah, Edmonton is, is down a man for since the 24th minute. And shorthanded because of the injuries and call-ups. But what they're looking at is the third game in a row where they have not scored. And to think three weeks ago this team was looking at a, a chance to play themselves into a playoff position. And since then it's been uh, down the table and that shows how a couple of bad weeks can, can really send you in uh, the wrong direction in this league. Fordyce trying to play in Boakai, pitch colon, safety first, concedes the throw in. But the Eddie started off the fall season very, very well. Led the fall season table through through July until they were overtaken by Ottawa. The last three weeks have been very, very rough on this team. Campos's first touch is a header. Didn't probably turn out the way he would have liked. Cruz has possession, but Ibsen winning it back now for Minnesota. Oh, 
Brad Smith doing a good job there to cut out Al Hassan, concedes the throw in. John Key penalized, thought that he should have had the free kick. The referee gives it the other way. Okay, he said that uh, John Key backed in. I think he felt that, Cal that Thiago had gone over his back. Yeah, I'm not, not really sure how that foul was on uh, Frank Jonke there. Looked a little harsh. He did leave his feet, and uh, Cal 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 Thiago came over his back. Jonke on for Amiobi in this game. Another throw in for Minnesota. We're into the last seven minutes now at Clark Stadium. A 1 0 lead for Minnesota here. Late tackle by Boakai. He's penalized for another free, free kick for Minnesota. The referee, not a popular man out there as far as the home fans are concerned today. That's going to drop for Eddie Edward. It's very hard for him to find anywhere to go forward though he plays a nice pass to the left but goes down under a late tackle and the free kick this time is given to FC Edmonton they can't really take it quickly though because Edward is still struggling to get up and he's walking a little bit gingerly as he tries to gather himself yet he's used all their subs too so they just got to get up and get on with it we can see that wind's really picked up in the last 10 minutes or so that ball's really holding up now doesn't make it too jonky in Minnesota. Win possession back yet again. And it's that man, Venegas. Jonky does well to steal possession there, and it's Cruz. Cruz has got Boakai to his right. He's picked him out. It's Boakai with a chance here. Tries his left foot a shot. Doesn't really get enough on it. Jonky will win it back, though. Frank Jonky got that going. Winning possession very nicely. Picks out Cruz again. Cruz. Running into the penalty area, still going, trying to make something of it. Boakai gets a touch, and they've won a corner. Yeah, it was a great play by Cruz to pick out Boakai there. I think he just got caught in two minds if he was going to try to hammer that shot or if he was going to try to to chip or play something. And then the ball, I think, shanked off his foot and went to the corner. But it worked out okay for the Eddies in the sense that Cruz was able to win it back and create a, at least a corner kick opportunity. Cruz is going to take the corner. Delivered it nicely. Oh, and there was a scissor kick in there by Frank Jonke. Got his left foot on the ball, but just couldn't direct it towards the target. And it goes behind for a goal kick. Frank Jonke here decides to go for the spectacular. Leans out there, lays out there. Well, he won the ball back very well for FC Edmonton to get that attack moving. And it just goes to show this game is not dead yet. There's just a slender margin. Only a few minutes to go, and Minnesota there just a touch casual and very nearly punished for it. It's just got to give the Eddies a little spark there to think, okay, we did create something. We had a, had a look at goal. They're not, it's not impregnable. Minnesota's got a lot of jerseys out there. We can beat it. Good effort again by Jonke there to play in ZB. Right-hand side infield to Boakai, Boakai dispossessed but the ball's going to drop for Roberts he can switch it out wide to the left wing and Smith Smith struggling it to control it Mendez takes it away from him but Smith has won it back good uh, good effort by Johan Smith decides to play it into the middle for his captain Albert Watson ZB again now Eddie Edward Campos trying to win it off him from behind, but Edward kept it ticking over with Cruz. Forward to Boakai. Boakai running at the defense here, and the referee gives no free kick. Boakai feeling like he was brought down there, but the referee saw nothing wrong with it. And Minnesota play a long goal kick right up the middle. Watson does well to cut that one out. They had two players right behind him. Immediately, the referee user Rudolph was putting the palms down, saying no foul, no foul, and obviously saw the reaction of Hanson Boakai and the Eddies players. They were pretty aggrieved by that. 
Boakai throwing his hands onto the floor. He wasn't very pleased with that. You can see from the possession that Minnesota have had more of it, but you would have expected with a man advantage it would be more than 55-45. Smith tries to keep the ball in play there, but not a lot he can do about that. Meanwhile, Gutsmanov is going to come on for Ibsen, who's had a good game in the midfield for Minnesota today. This substitution brought to you by The Helm, Edmonton's premier men's clothing boutique. And allows Minnesota to, try to take a few more seconds off the, the clock as well with this sub. Just breaks up the play a bit. The momentum was with FC Edmonton just moments ago, but that free kick that Boakai thought he should have had wasn't given. And so Ibsen takes his time to walk off the pitch. Vicentini. Again at the heart of that play, and Roberts just blasting that one down. And out of touch, it'll be Minnesota's ball again with two minutes to play of normal time. There will be some stoppages. Not very long, though, I don't think. Gotsmanov will take this corner kick. Gets it back from Campos. Venegas under pressure from Boakai. coming in from the left-hand side, and Van Ockel will get to that, but the flag up anyway. The referee just acknowledging that. Van Ockel playing it off the ground, finding Fordyce. Roberts's forward pass, not his best, but makes amends and wins it back, concedes the throw in. Minnesota, he knows no hurry now to take these slow stroll over here by Venegas. Campos unable to return the ball back to Venegas though, and it's a throw in for Edmonton. Smith finding Roberts. Roberts will go back to his goalkeeper, Van Opel, who will find Watson. Watson picks out Edward. Just no way through there for the moment, though, and Van Opel will just pump it long. Jonkey's up for this one, gets his head on it. Going to play five minutes of stoppages here. So there's still some time for FC Edmonton to get an unlikely equalizer with 10 men. And they played most of the match with 10 men. Jonkies flicked on header towards Fordyce. Doesn't reach him, drops in the midfield area again. And Minnesota just with more bodies in there, winning the ball back, but it drops for Hanson Boakai. Watson driving the ball forward, looking for John. He gets a touch on it. Four dice was in. Why wouldn't they play the advantage? Colin Miller furious with the linesman down there. That's just that's just awful refereeing, I have to say. Daryl Fordyce is in clear on the advantage, in alone on goal. And I can understand why the Eddies are furious here. This is absolutely terrible officiating. Yes, there's a foul there. But the ball goes right to an Eddies player. You play the advantage. And he's going in on goal, alone. That one is very hard to believe. Fordyce couldn't believe it. 
That's just, that's just horrible. It really is. I, I, I can understand why the Eddies are aggrieved here. Watson's ball, there it is. There's the foul, but there is Fordyce in behind the back, one-on-one. -on -one. How do you not play the advantage if you're the referee? How do you... It's, it's just beyond me. In, a, in the professional game that you have a referee who doesn't understand that, you have to play the advantage in that situation. Still got the free kick. Fordyce and Boakai standing over the ball. It's Daryl Fordyce over the wall, and they got it on target. But then Jacques gets down low to his left and makes a very good save for Minnesota. Still a couple of minutes left, but that was such a guilt-edged opportunity if the advantage had been played. Well, the referee, not Colin Miller's favorite before this match, as he said to us, and after this, uh, there might be some more conversations. Fordyce still in the penalty area, trying to make something happen. He's got another free kick on the edge of the box. Home crowd sensing that this is not over, that there's a real chance here for Daryl Fordyce. Just did well to keep the ball alive, keeps going and maybe gets a little push from behind, a high boot. Not sure what it was for, but the whistle has gone. You can see here's another chance. Fordyce had a measured shot on goal, the last opportunity on the free kick. Jock was able to make the save. Well, maybe that's given him the chance to find his range. This one a bit close in. They always say, players, they like to be a little further out to get it over the wall and then down again, but this is a great chance in stoppage time for Daryl Fordyce. FC Edmonton with 10 men fighting their way back into this match. A goal down. But here's the chance for Fordyce. Oh, he's gone for power, and he scored! Fordyce, in injury time, drives it through the wall and into the back of the net, and FC Edmonton have rescued themselves with a point and come from behind. It's 1-1. You know, in the first half, we talked about how Edmonton couldn't, have, couldn't put together a wall. Now Minnesota look like they don't know how to put together a defensive wall either on, on the free kick. Fordyce just... Puts it on the ground and smokes it, smokes it forward. They jump right over the ball. Jump right over the ball. I tell you, there's two teams that need to that 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 in this game, two free kicks where the wall has absolutely parted and left their keepers hanging out to dry. You saw it in the first half with the Eddies, and now we see it in the second half with Minnesota. FC Edmonton. One apiece with Minnesota and Boakai chasing away on the right-hand side here. He's put the ball through for Jonky, who's offside, and Jacques makes the claim anyway. What a finish to this match, a pulsating end. Fordyce, who moments ago had a free kick save just before that, seemed to be clean through, but no advantage played. And now, this time, he goes for power. It's a risky strategy through the wall, but it paid off, and it's won his manager Colin Miller a point and I think probably just about right with the effort the Eddies put in to come back having played such a long time with 10 men in fact about 75 minutes so FC Edmonton win a point Daryl Fordyce's free kick I'm sure we'll see that one on the highlight reels to come FC Edmonton square it up stay with us for the post game show it's 1-1 Manny, uh, maybe just take us to the last couple of minutes of the game, a game that you looked like to have fairly well in hand, and then the the, the goal coming. Yeah, I just we didn't manage the the, the the end of the game. You know, we gave up a couple free kicks that create dangerous chances. I mean, it, it may or may not have been a foul the second one, but at the end of the day, you you, you put yourself in that position maybe by not managing things a little bit better. And credit to Edmonton, uh, you know, just sticking with it and, and trying to believe they could get a chance to to get a tie. So, but um, you know. A uh, little, bit, little bit speechless uh, because, uh, you know, we, we should have managed it better. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Manny Lagos uh, saying he's a little bit speechless. Not surprising. It seemed like his team was heading for three points, but that terrific drive from Daryl Fordyce getting Edmonton a point. Let's hear from Colin Miller on the pitch. Joining us, Colin, let's just first talk us through Daryl's uh, free kick there. Yeah, I'm, I'm delighted for him because he's put in a great shift again today. All the guys have. I'm, I'm very, very proud of them. When we went down to 10 men, 
as I said at half time, I was really pleased with the reaction of, of having to go down to 10 men. Uh, I thought it was terrific. But I actually thought the referee made a mistake on the first free kick because Darrow was in and we had good possession. He was straight through on the goalkeeper and he, and he called it back. So thankfully, uh, we've scored from the free kick. But I, I got to give our guys an enormous amount of credit here, uh, Gareth, because they never stopped. They never stopped trying. And, and we had to weather a wee bit of storm. Big Matt played very well, made a couple of good saves for us. And this is a very talented Minnesota team. Let's not kid ourselves. It, and to go with down to 10 men for a big majority of the game, uh, the guys gave a, a maximum effort. I'm very, very proud of them. Well done, Colin. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Colin Miller joining us uh, on the pitch. Let's look back at the highlights today. Brought to you by Oodle Newton. Well, what a roller coaster of a game. Here's where it all started to go wrong. Free kick given just to pull on the shirt there by Eddie Edward. And here's the free kick that goes through the wall. Right through the, the gap between Roberts and Zeebe there. Has some bend on it afterwards to make it look really nice, but that's when the wall had to should stop. See Edmonton then down to 10 men. Noni sent off, but still kept probing away. And in the second half, really battling hard to try and come back into it. As Colin Miller mentioned, several saves by Matt Van Okel. Very slippery ball there. That was a good one, down to his left. I think here's the one on Ramirez we're going to see there. Quick reaction, maybe this best stop. Yeah, the pick of the saves from that one. And there is Daryl Fordyce, just goes for power. And it's a great strike, Steve. Yeah, it goes for power, but uh, poor wall by Minnesota. Thanks for joining us. Great game today and a 1-1 draw.